prototypes that flew, official certifications, and even Ford's interest in producing 25,000 units. Since 1937, flying cars worked perfectly, but something always kept them grounded, from fatal tragedies to revolutionary designs, prepared to discover flying machines that promised total freedom, but delivered only billion dollar frustration. Why flying cars that worked perfectly never took off. September 11th, 1973, Henry Smolinski and Hal Blake died when their AVE Mazar broke apart at 500 feet. The Ford Pinto separated from the Cessna Skymaster wings, plummeting into a California bean field. This wasn't just another prototype failure, it was filmed. Witnesses watched the right wing strut snap like a toothpick under the car's weight. The Mizar concept seemed logical, made a Pinto to Cessna wings for dual purpose transport. The Cessna's Continental engine powered flight at 120 miles per hour. The Pinto's engine drove the wheels at highway speeds, but nobody calculated the stress on 40-year-old aircraft struts carrying 800 extra pounds. The attachment points were simply welded brackets, approved by no engineer. Smolinski had already sold franchises for Mizar dealerships before completing safety tests. Advanced vehicle engineers promised delivery by 1974 at $8,500. The company claimed any compact car could be fitted with their wing kit. After the crash, investigators found metal fatigue throughout the attachment system. The welds showed signs of previous cracking painted over. The AVE Mazar killed more than its creators. It murdered public trust in flying cars for decades. Every serious attempt afterward faced the ghost of that film disaster. But three years before this tragedy, German engineers were testing something even more radical. A car that didn't need wings at all, just rotors spinning directly overhead. October 2nd, 1970. The Wagner Aero Car appeared on BBC Tomorrow's World as Germany's solution to traffic. This wasn't a plane with folding wings, it was a car with helicopter rotors. Twin coaxial blades spinning in opposite directions eliminated the tail rotor, making it compact enough for parking spaces. The enclosed bubble cockpit looked straight from a James Bond film. The counter-rotating system created unprecedented stability, but generated hurricane-force downwash. During the BBC filming, it sandblasted paint off nearby cars and shattered a greenhouse 200 feet away. Forward flight exceeded 30 miles per hour only once, resulting in severe oscillation that nearly destroyed the prototype. West German authorities watched one demonstration where the Wagner created a dust cloud visible from two miles away. The rotor wash was so violent it triggered car alarms in a three block radius. Engine cooling was impossible. The downwash recirculated hot air back into the intakes. After 20 minutes of hovering, the engine temperature redlined. Fire extinguishers stood ready at every test. The only prototype was destroyed in January 1972 during a ground resonance test. The fuselage shook itself apart in 45 seconds, scattering rotor blades 300 yards. While Germans were literally shaking their flying car to pieces, an American inventor named Paul Mahler was dreaming bigger, promising speeds that would make even jets jealous. 2003. Paul Mahler unveiled his Skycar M400, claiming it would fly 375 miles per hour and revolutionize transport. This Ferrari-shaped vertical takeoff vehicle had eight ducted fans powered by rotary engines. After 40 years and $100 million of investor money, it managed only tethered hovers, not one free flight, not one mile of forward movement. The M400 supposedly seated four passengers in leather comfort while computers managed the complex flight systems. Mahler claimed it needed only 35 feet to take off and could fly at 25,000 feet. Pre-orders cost $500,000 and the company collected deposits for years. Every demonstration showed the same thing, hovering on cables at 10 feet, engines screaming at deafening levels. SEC investigated Mahler International for fraud in 2003. The company had sold shares based on flight capabilities never demonstrated. Mahler claimed FAA restrictions prevented free flights, but documents showed he never applied for permits. The prototype consumed five gallons of fuel per minute while hovering. At that rate, the promised 750 mile range would require 4,000 gallons. The Skycar M400 still appears at air shows, still tethered, still promising imminent breakthrough. Yet decades before Mahler's expensive disappointment, a modest inventor named Moulton Taylor had already built, flown, and proven a flying car so practical that Ford almost mass-produced it. December 15th, 1949. Moulton Taylor's aero car did something remarkable. It actually worked. Six units built, all flew successfully, one still flies today. 
The genius was simplicity. Wings folded into a towable trailer. One person could convert it in five minutes. Ford Motor Company agreed to mass produce 25,000 units if Taylor secured 500 orders. He got 422. The aero car cruised at 100 miles per hour airborne, 60 on roads. The Lycoming O320 pushed a rear propeller in flight, drove front wheels through a proprietary transmission on ground. It met both FAA aircraft standards and highway safety requirements. Taylor flew his personal unit over 20,000 miles without major incident. This wasn't a prototype, it was a proven product. Bob Cummings, television star, owned and promoted an aero car on his show. He flew it to premieres, racing his co-stars who drove cars. The publicity generated thousands of inquiries, but few sales. Price was the killer, $15,000 when a new Cadillac cost $3,000. The final blow came from suburban sprawl. Small airports near cities disappeared under development. Without places to land, a flying car became pointless. The Taylor Aero Car inspired every serious attempt that followed. Taylor spent 30 more years refining designs, creating improved models through the N700T. But even before Taylor's practical approach, another inventor had achieved something more remarkable, the first government certification for a rotable aircraft, 1950. The Fulton Amphibian became the first flying car certified by the CAA. Robert Edison Fulton Jr., who'd circled the globe on a Douglas motorcycle, created an aluminum aircraft that converted to a car in four minutes. The propeller, an entire tail section, detached as one unit. Eight were built, all flew successfully. The military ordered prototypes. Everything pointed to success. The Airphibian flew at 120 miles per hour, drove at 50. The Continental C90 engine powered both modes through an innovative dual-clutch system. Fulton demonstrated reliability by flying from Connecticut to Washington, then driving to the CAA offices for certification. No other flying car achieved this level of official approval. The control system was revolutionary. The aircraft stick mechanically converted to steering wheel. At $7,500, an Airphibian cost more than four luxury cars. Fulton needed to sell thousands to achieve profitability, but managed only eight sales. The military tested two units for battlefield reconnaissance, but chose helicopters instead. Insurance companies refused coverage for dual-use vehicles. Banks wouldn't finance them. Fulton faced an impossible market position. The Airphibian project ended in 1952. Fulton pivoted to inventing the Skyhook retrieval system, later used to snatch film canisters from spy satellites. His practical design would inspire countless imitators, including a wild attempt to turn the concept into a flying saucer straight from science fiction movies. 1988. Paul Mahler's flying saucer, M200X, looked exactly like what UFO conspiracy theorists imagined. Eight engines arranged in a perfect circle, creating a disc-shaped vehicle that hovered three feet off the ground. It wasn't meant for interstellar travel, just avoiding traffic. The eight Rotax engines generated more noise than a rock concert, consuming two gallons of fuel per minute while barely moving. The M200X managed to hover at 10 feet maximum altitude, always tethered for safety. Each engine drove a shrouded fan, theoretically providing stability through redundancy. In reality, coordinating eight separate throttles proved impossible without computer assistance, technology that didn't exist affordably in 1988. Test pilots described it as riding a mechanical bull programmed by a sadist. Mahler claimed the saucer design offered perfect stability and control. Tests proved otherwise. Ground effect created unpredictable air cushions that bounced the vehicle randomly. The circular shape caught crosswinds like a sail, spinning uncontrollably. One demonstration ended with the M200X rotating like a carnival ride until the pilot vomited and emergency crews cut the tethers. The flying saucer never flew untethered or traveled horizontally. It exists today in Mahler's Museum of Unfulfilled Promises, alongside his other prototypes. Total development cost exceeded $10 million for a vehicle that traveled less distance than a shopping cart. But while Mahler built his stationary UFO, Italian designers were crafting something that actually looked good enough to fly. Luigi Pellerini's Air Auto PL5C was pure Italian style meeting aerial ambition. Built in 1949, this rear-engine pusher looked more like a Cisitalia race car than a flying machine. The folding wings tucked elegantly beside the fuselage. That rear-mounted propeller hid behind aerodynamic fairings. It achieved 150 miles per hour airborne, faster than most light aircraft of its era. 
the PL5C featured innovations ahead of its time. Variable pitch propeller for optimal performance. Retractable landing gear that doubled as road wheels. The cockpit used automotive gauges readable by pilots and drivers. Pellerini employed Zagato coach builders for the body, creating curves that belonged in an art gallery. This wasn't just transportation, it was sculpture that flew. Post-war Italy offered no infrastructure for private aviation. Fuel remained rationed. Airports were military controlled. The Air Auto needed high octane aviation fuel unavailable at gas stations. Insurance companies wouldn't touch it. Italian law had no category for flying cars. Pellerini built one prototype that flew successfully multiple times around Milan before regulations grounded it permanently. The original PL5C disappeared during the 1966 Florence floods. Only photographs remain of Italy's most beautiful flying car. Pellerini died believing Italy missed its chance at aviation leadership. His elegant failure proved that style without infrastructure equals expensive art. Nine years before Pellerini's Italian masterpiece, an American inventor was already solving the practical problems. February 21st, 1937. Waldo Waterman's Aerobile lifted off from a California airstrip, becoming America's first truly functional flying car. This two-door convertible with detachable wings could fly straight from your driveway. The teardrop fuselage with a radial engine achieved 90 miles per hour airborne 50 on ground. Waterman wasn't some garage tinkerer. He was Glenn Curtis's chief engineer. The Aerobile featured tricycle landing gear, revolutionary for 1937. Wings detached and could be towed like a trailer. The tailless design eliminated complex control surfaces. Studebaker Corporation commissioned five prototypes for potential mass production. They envisioned dealerships selling flying cars alongside sedans. Only two were built before the Great Depression killed automotive innovation budgets. Flight characteristics proved surprisingly docile. The pusher configuration kept the propeller away from passengers. The tricycle gear made ground handling simple. No pilot reported serious control issues. The Aerobile accumulated over 1,000 flight hours without major incident. The Civil Aeronautics Authority didn't know how to classify it, aircraft or automobile, so they created new regulations that effectively banned it. One surviving Aerobile resides in the Smithsonian, proof the dream worked 85 years ago. Waterman proved flying cars were possible, but society wasn't ready. The infrastructure, regulations, and public acceptance didn't exist. His vision would wait 75 years for technology and attitudes to catch up, finally arriving in a form he could never have imagined. April 2nd, 2012. The Terrafugia transition completed its first public flight, achieving what predecessors couldn't, commercial viability. Created by MIT engineers, this wasn't another garage experiment. It met both FAA light sport aircraft standards and NHTSA highway requirements. Wings folded in under 60 seconds. The Rotax engine delivered 100 knots airborne 70 miles per hour on roads. The transition incorporated modern safety absent from historical attempts. Airbags, crumple zones, safety cage construction. The cabin featured automotive comfort with aircraft instrumentation. GPS navigation worked for both flying and driving modes. Electric wing folding eliminated manual labor. This was the first flying car designed with modern liability concerns. Every component passed both automotive crash tests and aircraft certification. Pricing started at $279,000. Expensive, but achievable for affluent early adopters. Over 100 deposits were placed. The company secured 20 million in funding. Everything pointed toward production. Then reality hit. Infrastructure hadn't evolved since the 1950s. Airports near cities remained scarce. Insurance costs proved astronomical. The market existed, but remained frustratingly small. Terrafugia proved the flying car technically feasible, but commercially challenged. The transition flew perfectly, drove adequately, but sold poorly. The company pivoted to electric vertical takeoff designs, following market trends. The Dream Waterman started in 1937 and finally succeeded technically, but failed economically. Yet even as Terrafugia struggled, European designers were preparing something even more ambitious. 2014. Slovakia's Aeromobil 3.0 emerged as the most advanced flying car ever built. Carbon fiber construction, Rotax 912 engine, variable angle wings, automotive luxury interior. It looked like a Lamborghini that sprouted wings. Top speed reached 160 miles per hour flying, 100 on highways. This wasn't retrofitted. 
It was designed from scratch as a dual-purpose vehicle. The Aeromobile featured innovations previous attempts lacked. Ballistic parachute for emergency landing. Advanced avionics with autopilot capability. Wings that adjusted angle for optimal road clearance. The transformation took under three minutes. Stefan Klein, the designer, accumulated over 10,000 hours developing the concept. The prototype logged hundreds of successful flights across Europe, proving reliability. May 8th, 2015. Test pilot Stefan Klein ejected when the Aeromobile entered an unrecoverable spin during testing. The ballistic parachute deployed, saving his life, but the prototype was destroyed. Investigation revealed no design flaw, just the inherent instability of compromised vehicles. The crash footage went viral, reviving memories of the 1973 Mazar disaster. Investor confidence evaporated overnight. Aeromobile continues development with version 4.0, promising production by 2025. The price approaches 1 million euros. Aeromobile continues development with its version 4.0, promising production by the year 2025. The price is expected to be around 1 million euros. Dozens have already been pre-sold to collectors who may never actually fly them. But while Slovakia struggled with destroyed prototypes, the Netherlands was quietly working on something that would finally break the curse, a flying car that truly reached both the streets and the skies. In March of 2018, the Dutch PAL V Liberty did the unthinkable. It became the first commercially available flying car with full European certification. It was not a plane with foldable wings, nor an urban helicopter. It was a three-wheel gyrocopter looking like a Lamborghini crossed with an auto gyro. After 20 years of development, personal air and land vehicle finally delivered real units to paying customers. The Liberty uses a free unpowered rotor for lift and a rear propeller for thrust. On the ground, it reaches 160 km per hour, powered by a Honda motorcycle engine. In the air, it flies at 180 km per hour with a range of 500 km. The conversion from driving to flight mode takes about 10 minutes manually. But the real breakthrough was not technical. It was regulatory. The PALV achieved simultaneous ESA certification for flight and European Union road approval. The starting price is 300,000 euros for the sport model and 500,000 euros for the Pioneer Edition. Expensive, but accessible to wealthy early adopters. More importantly, it works. Real owners drive it on European highways and take off from local airfields. It is not a concept, not a prototype. It is a product. The company delivered the first units in 2020 during the global pandemic, proving viability even under extreme conditions. The PALV Liberty did not revolutionize transportation, but it proved that flying cars can exist legally, commercially, and practically. After 85 years of broken promises, we finally have a flying machine that meets regulations, operates reliably, and can be bought with real money. The dream did not die. It just cost half a million euros and arrived with a Dutch accent. 80 years proving the problem was never making them work, but justifying why. Every project showed that dreaming of freedom has a steep price. Which would you pilot? Comment below. Like, if this story surprised you, was the technology wrong or were we not ready? Subscribe for more impossible revelations. Share with innovation lovers. Watch the videos on screen and continue with flying machines that fascinate the world. Bye bye.